Hello out there. I'm Morpai, and we're kicking off this historical battle with that idiot there on the right running into the hangar. That's probably not a good sign. So, I thought I'd try my hand at this making videos malarkey, based mainly on something that Jingles said a number of weeks ago, uh, along the lines of, if you're interested in this sort of thing, just get off your ass and make something. So, here I am. Uh, not sure it's going to be entertaining. Basically, it's just going to be me rambling on about whatever's got my attention at the moment. And we'll get to that, but first, because this is my first video, I figure I'll just uh, talk a little bit about the plan. Uh, since personally, I like the longer videos, the style of videos that Jingles, uh, Baron, Entac, RamJB, uh, their half hour, 40 minute videos, I love those. And because I'm the kind of guy that can generally just talk forever, that's probably the kind of thing that I'm going to end up doing. A bit of a different take on things, though. Uh, hopefully a little bit more philosophical. Um, not quite sure. We'll see where things go. I'm not nearly as good a player as they are, and I know that they all say, oh, look, you know, we're just harvesting the good video, the, the, uh, the good replays to make these videos out of, and makes us look better than we actually are, but frankly, they are better than me, and to prove it, I've been playing War Thunder since 1.6, uh, 2.6, and it's only this week that I've actually got my first legitimate air-to-air -air kills in the game. Won't be doing that here, um, this is just a low altitude, high speed run. I thought I'd grab a torpedo, hope for a map with ships in it, and I got that. And I'm going to have a crack at taking down a ship, basically because I wanted to see what it would earn me. I didn't really know. Um, but you can see how bad I am at this game in both this replay and the one that's coming up. I'm a bit of an arcade noob. Like I said, I've probably, I've, I think I've got about three, maybe four kills in total in historical battles, and it's not really for lack of trying, it's just because I'm bad at it, and uh, mad props to RamJB, I've been watching some of his videos lately, and his constant sort of reminder that you've got to go for the height early, so exactly the kind of thing that I'm not doing here. Uh, that's the key to victory, and I don't know if it would have been here, but you'll see how it turns out. Uh, the episode that I wanted to do today was on something that's come up a couple of times. Uh, I helped Baron with some screenshots for the, uh, the naval units, and if you've seen that video, then you'll know the kind of thing uh, that he was talking about in, in that particular video. I have a real desire to see submarines in this game, and I know there are some other people who feel the same way that I do, but there also seem to be a whole lot of people who just don't get how submarines might work. Now, if we just hold that thought for a minute, in the Second World War, torpedoes... I should be dropping here, because torpedoes were normally dropped from around 1,500 to 2,000 metres at range from the air. And uh, in this case I dropped that one at around 850 metres, which is just outside the 600 metre minimum arming range. Um, and that's worth keeping in mind when we start talking about submarines and submarine combat. Now, the thing that I was getting at is, if you're not keen on the idea of submarines in the game, and you think they're inevitably just going to be overpowered. I'm kind of curious as to what's what you envision that World War II submarine warfare being. These were really slow, really lightly armed and armoured vessels. Uh, they initially didn't even have the capability to uh, fire on vessels from a, a kind of a hidden condition. Up until 1943, so just two years before the end of the war, U-boats, submarines were 
predominantly still using deck guns, which meant that they would have to surface, um, and from the surface, fire on ships using a large gun that was placed on the top deck of the submarine. Uh, the wolf packs, the German wolf packs, would generally make their attacks at night using the deck guns and then slip back underwater to make their escape. That sort of led to some difficulties of its own because underwater the submarines had a cruising speed of only around about two knots and it would be a very good day if you could make them go any faster than eight knots. And when travelling underwater they were limited by the capacity of their batteries which towards the end of the war did get quite good. Um, I believe some of the US submarines uh, travelling at two knots underwater could sustain that for 48 hours, which isn't too bad. But in principle, what you end up with is really a very squishy, very slow unit that really only has the advantage of being hidden until it's time to attack. And presumably, as you go up in the tiers, I, I don't know how many submarines there would be in the naval combat, but let's say there are three submarines spread throughout the naval tiers. So you would have, uh, say, you'd begin with an early between the wars submarine. Then the second stage might be one of the early war submarines. And then towards the late stage, you would have, uh, you know, one of the more advanced later war submarines. Still quite a soft target. It still has to surface with the exception of that third category. Um, and, of course, as you can see me sort of flying around now, the, uh, the one major disadvantage that the submarines would have is that basically regardless of which state they're in, they're going to be visible from the air. Even a submerged submarine, well below periscope depth, is visible you know, surface conditions permitting, from an aircraft. Now, I'm about to get my ass whooped here. It's not pleasant. I'm not really sure in a bow fighter what to do. I was kind of hoping that my tail gunner would take care of this for me, but no. So, getting back to the submarines again. And uh, in, in terms of the, uh, the underwater capabilities, um, to recharge these batteries, the submarines would basically have to surface and then spend some time running their diesel generators. And these generators were really only specifically intended to recharge the batteries. Now that's something that you could also incorporate into the game. You could give these submarines quite a limited underwater battery life because already in War Thunder time is compressed and distances are compressed. So, theoretically, you'd be able to do exactly the same thing. I don't see why not. So you would give them a, uh, a, a bat underwater battery life maybe on the order of minutes, uh, at which point they would need to surface again and they'd need to spend some time up on the surface running those generators in order to have another go underwater. My overall kind of vision and in order to uh, to sort of describe how how I think the submarines could best work we need to sort of go off on a bit of a tangent into where they might fit into the overall scheme of the game and I think we can already see a few indications and I know Baron talked about this in the naval units video we can see a few indications of what we might have coming with the naval combat. I think it's fair to say that every naval unit is going to have some capacity for air defense. So they're going to have, in varying degrees, a kind of anti-aircraft gun, maybe some flak. Then you'll have units that are more specific to different types of roles. I didn't think aircraft carriers would be a good idea until Baron explained his sort of perspective that maybe you could use these aircraft carriers to launch uh, 
AI-controlled combat air patrol squadrons, for instance. And with the new maps and the squadrons of B-17s, I'm, I'm sort of seeing how that might work, and it looks quite interesting. So the ships all have air defences, and then from there they sort of divide up into their own specific uh, strengths. So, for instance, the battleships would have their huge long-range guns. Presumably they'd be able to bombard uh, either other naval units or perhaps land units. Uh, although I don't play World of Tanks, I've seen how the artillery works in that, and uh, I'm sort of envisioning the same kind of thing for the battleships. Destroyers and cruisers are going to be more focused on defeating other shipping. I'm really hoping that we get to see some fast torpedo boats to, you know, to try to get in there and then hit and run. So within that overall scheme of things where you have AI-controlled aircraft which would be capable of spotting submarines for other surface units, presumably you'd have uh, aircraft like the Catalinas, which you could equip then with depth charges, which they could then deploy around the enemy submarines. Now, these submarines would have already been spotted by friendly air units. The Catalinas can then self-direct onto those targets. Similarly, uh, you would have some kind of surface naval units, which are also equipped with depth charges, that could also direct themselves towards the much slower submarines and then you'd have this third category of naval units, the sort of cruiser, destroyer type of unit, which can also engage with the submarines when those submarines are on the surface. So all in all, I don't necessarily think they're hugely overpowered. These are all issues that I think can be resolved within the general balancing of the game. And so to have the kind of stealthy, backstabby, unit it's not ideal it's it's not you know the the, the perfect hit and run weapon um, but it opens up some interesting possibilities for gameplay that I'm really quite enthusiastic about the uh, the speed is a factor for another thing that I'm not sure has come up that often which is how might ships repair if indeed they repair at all uh, for aircraft we have airfields and they can return to the airfield and they can be repaired and rearmed at the airfield. Ships are much slower though, so are we going to have ports that the ships can return to? I'm not really sure how that would fit in with the time frame that we play around in. Would there be tender units perhaps that can rearm vessels uh, in combat and now uh, getting back to the game currently on screen you may have noticed that I had to go with the torpedo at the destroyer and I missed so spoilers it's gonna happen again I'm not entirely sure whether I shot too far off the nose and the torpedo crossed in front of the bow or whether I didn't lead the targets enough and the torpedoes ended up behind them uh, with the next torpedo you'll see that because I do get to the chance to rearm here with the next torpedo you'll see that uh, I, I try to monitor its progress and then lose track of it. Uh, the, it leaves a, a little wake behind it, uh, but I lose the wake in the, the, the sort of uh, waves, let's say. So, yeah, another less than ideal round. It would have been nice if it had all come together. Uh, we, there, there is a... Uh, a little happy surprise towards the end of the round. Probably giving it away now. Anyway, that pretty much does it for me on the subject of submarines. Um, I, I, it, yeah, this episode's been a little bit more incoherent and ranty than ideally I would have liked. I, I think one of the things that I've realised here right off the bat is that I need to do more research for future episodes but I think I'm just gonna upload this one as is call it a learning experience and uh, you know if in my incoherence I've managed to you know get anybody to rethink their their position on how submarines might fit into the game 
hey, that's brilliant. Um, that is the sort of thing that I'm hoping to do in the future. I just realise that I haven't done it particularly well. Not sure that I've made my case this time around. Um, yeah, I, I guess all that's left to do is to just commentate until the end of this particular match, and uh, then we'll call it an episode. Hooray! Now, in both of these matches, I've done exactly the opposite of what RamJB suggests. I've stayed low. I've tried to be low and fast. In the first match, it was definitely my intention to just do a shoot and scoot with the torpedo to take out a destroyer. Like I said, I was really quite curious to see, you know, what sort of lions it would offer up. Um, and then I got caught up shooting at ground targets until a hostile aircraft came along. Although I'm not sure that the match would have ended all that differently because it turned out I was the last plane alive. This time around, I've managed to rearm, so I've missed the first attempt. Well, at least we have attempt number two. And as we fly back towards the target, uh, on the subject of submarines, I, I did miss a couple of things. Um, I mentioned that the submarines were using deck guns until 1943. It's not strictly true for all nations. Uh, the other advantage of submarines, of course, is that, in fact, all nations, certainly all of the nations that we see represented in War Thunder, did actually use some kind of submarine. Uh, not just, you know, one exception or a prototype. Um, each of these nations, whether you're looking at England or Germany, uh, the Soviet Union, the United States, even Italy, they all had their own development programs for submarines and all have a decent variety of models that we can choose from, from the interwar period through to the end of the war. Now, the Germans were using deck guns, like I said, until 1943. That was the wolf pack tactic, and it wasn't until around about that year that they had to seriously start rethinking how they were conducting their submarine warfare. Uh, in the Pacific, on the other hand, the Americans, I think already from about 1940, certainly by 1941, were using, uh, let's say, periscope-guided uh, and launched torpedoes to take out Japanese shipping. So it's not strictly deck guns only till 1943. There are some, there's some variety there. And, uh, you know, isn't that a good thing? So, uh, I, I certainly think it, it's... You know, you don't want all of these submarines to be completely identical. Now, let's watch where I launched this torpedo. Here we go. That was about 600 metres. And I didn't really lead it that much. I mean, I'm talking about 20 metres or so off the bow of those ships. And this is where I try to follow the trail of the torpedo, but I just lose track of it. So, I can't really tell whether it's gone in front or behind those targets. I would have sworn that was going to be a good kill, but no such luck. So two runs, two misses, would have been a pretty good match otherwise, but now all that's left to do is fly back to the airfield and hope that there's enough time left in the round for a third attempt. Uh, while we're doing that, uh, again, I, I do want to reiterate that I haven't actually done my research for this episode. I won't be referencing any of this episode, so really, really haven't done my due diligence. Um, I am a history graduate, but the Second World War most definitely isn't my field. Uh, however, I do have an interest in it, particularly have an interest in naval combat and submarine combat, so sure, I might have got plenty of stuff wrong, but I think in the general overall sense of uh, what might be possible, I don't think I'm that far off. Now, as I'm flying back to base, I note that that Spitfire's being hunted by the 109. Looking around, don't see anybody else that's available to protect him, so I'm not sure how wise this is at this point, 
I figure the 109 wouldn't have come out this far if he didn't have a decent ammo load. But I've got big guns on the front, and I figure I can at least scare him off. Now, if you wondered why I haven't had any kills since 1.26, that'd be why. It's uh, It went by quite quick, but I'm pretty sure I didn't even pull the trigger until uh, well after he was past my aiming point. Don't have traces on. Running with stealth ammo, that's not the best thing to do in historical battles, so after this match I do change it back to Omni. Um, but yeah, he. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened, but he seems to have lost a little bit of uh, maneuverability, and it gives me the chance to do this. Didn't intend to ram, I didn't ram, and there's the kill with my tail gunner. I uh, I did try to pull out, I just, I've been flying fighters, this is my excuse by the way, <laughs> I've been flying fighters and I wasn't quite ready for how sluggishly the bow fighter was going to respond when I tried to pull it up. So, that's it. Not enough time left for that rearm. Match over. Episode over. Good night.